Okay, so we all have this incredible image in our heads, right? Humans on Mars, setting up shop, building a new future. It's a powerful dream. But what if the biggest uh, the biggest threat isn't the obvious stuff like radiation or the you know the vacuum of space? What if it's something deeper, more fundamental? Exactly, something researchers are starting to call sink drift. This idea that our biology, our very being, is just so deeply tuned into Earth's rhythms, Earth's motion, that leaving it behind for good could mess things up in ways we haven't fully grasped. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're diving into today, looking at it through the lens of motion theory. They argue pretty compellingly that we're not just living on Earth. We're connected to it. Intricately. Yeah. Connected to its motion system in ways we're maybe only just starting to understand. Okay. Earth as a motion system. That sounds big. What does that mean for us, like practically speaking? How does Earth moving actually shape us? Well, think about the constant subtle inputs. Gravity, yeah. right? That's fundamental to our balance, how we orient ourselves. Sure. Then there's the 24-hour day-night cycle. That tunes our sleep, our hormones. Uh, atmospheric pressure changes subtly affect our senses. Even Earth's magnetic field might play a part of how we navigate, subconsciously maybe. So we're like a, a loop inside a bigger loop, constantly uh, getting these signals? That's the concept, yeah, a nested loop. We're part of this grand system, always responding to these core motions. Wow. Okay, so that pens a picture. And we already see effects even on shorter space trips, right? Like the ISS, astronauts struggle with sleep. Sleep cycles get totally thrown off. Spatial disorientation is a big one. Yep. And of course, the muscle and bone density loss everyone knows about. So how does motion theory explain those things? Is it connected to this motion system idea? They'd say yes, absolutely. They call it rhythm starvation. Up there, you lose that constant gravitational anchor. You lose the subtle tensions, the feedback loops from Earth's motion that keep our internal biological rhythms humming along, synchronized. Right, the familiar cues are just Amazing. gone. Okay, now scale that up dramatically. A Mars mission, six maybe nine months just floating in zero G. Long time to be starved of those rhythms. And then you land on Mars and it's completely alien, only about, what, 38% of Earth's gravity? Roughly, yeah. And no global magnetic field to speak of. Light cycles are different, weaker, irregular compared to Earth's predictable rhythm. Pressure gradients, the whole atmosphere, totally unfamiliar. So this isn't just adapting to lower gravity anymore. What does motion theory call this long-term disconnect? This is where they use the term sink exile. It's a stark phrase. Exile. Wow. Yeah, and the implication isn't just that it's hard to adapt. The theory suggests it could be a kind of fundamental degradation. Our bodies evolved over millions of years within Earth's specific motion environment. Put us somewhere like Mars. And we might just never truly sync up. The body doesn't know how. It might not be able to. Not fully. The fear isn't just feeling off. It's that key systems might start to break down without the familiar Earth cues to reset them. And that leads to this concept they call loop collapse. Can you unpack that a bit? What would that look like for someone on Mars, potentially? Well, imagine those internal anchors. Balance, mm -hmm. rhythm, maybe even cognitive timing weakening. It could start subtly. Chronic fatigue that doesn't resolve. Confusion. Foggy memory. Stuff you might initially dismiss as just stress or adjustment. Maybe. But then it could progress, potentially to something like vestibular failure. That's your balance system going haywire, like permanent severe vertigo. That sounds debilitating. It would be. And then maybe sensory distortions, trouble processing information correctly. Yeah. Ultimately, maybe even a deep cognitive desynchronization. And the critical part is, unlike here on Earth, where a walk outside or a good night's sleep can help reset things. On Mars, there's no Earth to reset to. The environment itself is alien. Exactly. No familiar baseline for recalibration. It's fascinating because, you know, NASA and other agencies are obviously focused on big challenges, radiation shielding, bone density countermeasures. All absolutely crucial physical challenges. But motion theory seems to be pointing to something more insidious, something about the very integrity of our internal systems. Right. It shifts the focus slightly. While space medicine works hard on keeping the body physically functional, strong bones, healthy muscles, motion theory asks, what about the deep synchronization? What if we arrive on Mars physically okay, but our internal clocks, our sensory processing, our whole biological timing is fundamentally broken and Mars offers no way to fix it? That's a chilling thought, that Mars might not kill us with radiation, but could sort of erase the internal coherence that makes us function? 
It poses that question, yes. Yeah. Could the environment effectively unravel the synchronization that's core to being human as we know it? So pulling this all together, if this deep connection to Earth's motion system is as vital as motion theory suggests, what's the big takeaway for actually trying to become a multiplanetary species? I think the core insight is pretty clear. If we're serious about long-term survival, about maybe even colonizing Mars, we can't just think about shielding in habitats. We have to figure out how to, in some way, bring Earth's essential rhythmic cues with us. Like artificial gravity that spins, maybe. Or specific light cycles. Perhaps. Or maybe things we haven't even thought of yet. Mm -hmm. We need to consider preserving our internal Earth-tuned rhythms, not just our physical bodies. It really forces you to consider all those subtle, constant aspects of just being on Earth that we totally take for granted. The ground beneath our feet, the sun rising and setting. The visible forces. Yeah. Maybe the journey to another planet isn't just about exploring out there but about truly understanding and maybe needing to protect the internal world Earth built inside us. What rhythms are so fundamental we don't even notice them until they're gone? That's definitely something to think about.